A year ago, I walked around here planning the northern Vietnam section of Vietnam by the book tour. And I, as I love to do, just took random walks off the road wherever I saw something that looked interesting. And that's when I discovered this little village and collection of quite stunning scenes. So it's pretty special now to have a group of Vietnam by the book travellers walking with me here and enjoying what I experienced back then. And what's also very nice is that we have a very small group. We always travel in very small groups. So it's a pretty low impact travel situation as well. This cat likes the limelight. Last year I posted a video on this channel about running a tour in Vietnam 30 years ago. I had quite a bit of footage of uh, Vietnam in the 1990s and uh, it was kind of amazing to reflect on how Vietnam has changed in the past 30 years. Well, I'm just back from leading my most recent tour of Vietnam, that's Vietnam by the book. And I thought it might be interesting to reflect on what it's like leading tours in Vietnam 30 years later. Well, it's not just Vietnam that's been changing over the last 30 years. I hope I'm a tad wiser. And as I only lead a couple of Vietnam trips a year these days, I like to make them extra special. Something I become very aware of when I lead travellers around Vietnam is the privilege it's been to be welcomed here for three decades during a fascinating time of change. There was a special magic to Vietnam 30 years ago, but this was one of the poorest countries in the world. Ravaged by decades of war, hardline communist economic policies, and a punishing US trade embargo. Reminders of that poverty were everywhere. We discovered these kids digging unexploded ordnance for scrap metal on the Hyvan Pass, nearly two decades after the end of the war. Desperate, dangerous work that killed and maimed for decades. Even today, unexploded ordnance continues to menace the people of central Vietnam. Despite the hardship, we learned from the energy and hope that shone through. Vietnam had reopened its doors to the world and the expectation of better times ahead was everywhere. We were amazed by the welcome we received and the atmosphere of the streets. Travel was pretty hard going. Parts of Highway 1 were like a buffalo track. Transport was neither comfortable nor reliable. We experienced a couple of breakdowns. And to this day, it's the only tour I've ever taken that traveled Highway 1 all the way from Saigon to Hanoi. We loved it all. In Quang Binh province, they'd have seen very few Western tourists before. Right. Everywhere we went, we discovered beauty that seemed unknown to the outside world. The experience of Halong Bay before plastic rubbish and pollution stands out. For as long as I've been a traveller, books have been an essential accessory. So on our very first tours of Vietnam, we carried a library of about a dozen books. Our travellers loved it. 
Travelers without phones, reading books. Just a few decades later, it's an alien concept. This was years before the internet, and even longer before Google, TikTok, Instagram and TripAdvisor started to shape our travel choices. We were shaped by our reading and our curiosity and a youthful hunger for new experiences. The youth might be gone, but that culture still shapes us at Rusty Compass and Old Compass Travel. With the Continental and Caravelle hotels on the left, this is historic Domkoi Street in 1993. And today, in three decades, cars, many more motorbikes, and many more people. Vietnam's become a regional economic powerhouse, made friends with former foes, the population has passed 100 million. Many Vietnamese people have discovered opportunity and prosperity unimaginable to their parents. The physical changes in the cities have been astonishing. None of this Saigon skyline existed in 1993. And there's been a price to pay for all that rapid change. Corruption and inequality have soared. Concrete seems to win every battle over green spaces and public amenities. Environmental and livability concerns in Vietnam's major cities are growing. With so much change, travel has changed too. As travellers, we've always been drawn to places of unique beauty and unique character. But beauty takes many forms. And I reckon you're just as likely to find it in a big booming city as you are in a magnificent serene landscape like this. Being able to seek these places out and call it work has been a joy. It's been a 30-year education in history, culture, food, language, music and art. A three-decade research expedition. I reckon I've learned two really important travel lessons. The first is that pretty much anywhere is interesting. I don't think there are too many places I've been where I couldn't say I haven't found interesting, beautiful things. I'm always on the lookout for things that are different, things that are beautiful, and stories. In Vietnam, that gives you a lot to work with. And the other lesson is, the small things you do, often random things without any planning, are often far more rewarding than visits to the places that Instagram, TripAdvisor, TikTok tell you you gotta see. But I realise my operating system has always been that I will definitely go and see essential museums, essential monuments, the things that everybody visits when they're in a city. But my sense of whether I really like a city or not is going to come from much more down-to-earth experiences like walking, eating and cycling. And the things you're going to look for will be things that are unique to that place. There may be little known wonders just outside your home or down the road from your hotel. And that's where books come in. Armed with a little bit of curiosity and knowledge, you'll find yourself seeking things out and discovering things that otherwise you might have overlooked. You'll probably also find that this approach puts you out of sync with the tourism masses who are always your fellow travellers in popular destinations. Something that surprised our travellers on Vietnam by the book was how often popular, famous places we visited were uncrowded. 
Vietnam's power to charm and captivate visitors is as strong as ever. Quite often I hear people say, oh, I travelled to Vietnam two or three decades ago and I loved it then, but I hear it's overdeveloped now and I shouldn't go back. And if you're expecting the country to be the same as it was then, you will be disappointed. So my first decade and a half in this part of the world was spent on the back of uh, motorbikes or riding Honda Cubs around. And now I'm in an EV taxi in the middle of Saigon. Vietnamese made, no less. Well, that was a pretty amazing ride in Saigon. There's been a lot of demolition of unique Vietnamese heritage over the last 30 years. That has been painful to watch. And many threats remain. Vietnamese people are increasingly aware and proud of their traditional culture. That's not usually enough to match developer pressure and money. But the best thing about Vietnam has always been the people, their humour, their character and their stories. I've learned from the generosity of professors, street food vendors, cyclo drivers, soldiers from both sides of the conflict and many, many others. Tất cả ông bà ở đây. Sau khi mà cô sống ở Huế, cô, cô tôi, ở nhà này không? Dạ, tôi đã sinh ra tại ngôi nhà này. À, thế à? What a privilege to have some time with Professor Kim Lan, who spent most of her academic career teaching philosophy in Germany. My cyclo driver, Mr. Tien, is uh, in command. Vietnamese, you say. But it's often the most rewarding part of travel is getting out and digging deeper, exploring more. And it still brings me enormous joy, especially when I meet people like Mr. Zong. <laughs> that exploration will open you up to finding noodles that you won't find on any online bucket list. And that's because there are too many places serving delicious noodles. If this kind of travel sounds interesting to you, you can subscribe to this channel, you can check out our independent travel guides and sign up for our newsletter over at rustycompass.com and if you'd like to travel with us in person, I lead Vietnam by the book twice a year and we run walking tours of big stories and fascinating places in Saigon and Sydney. There are a bunch of links to check out in the introduction too. Head over to oldcompasstravel.com. Thanks for joining and talk again soon. Nói tiếng Anh giỏi lắm. Ơi. Nói tiếng Việt ngắn. Ngắn gọn thôi. Nói anh đi đâu để đi chơi? Đi chơi chứ. Đẹp ạ. This is the joy of Vietnam. Meeting Mr. Mr. Hiệp đúng không? Chú tên là Hiệp đúng không? Tên Hiệp. Meeting Mr. Hiệp on the bicycle. Vui quá chú ơi. Quá tuyệt vời chú ơi. Bye bye. Bye bye chú nhá. Chú vui vẻ nhá.